Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Retail Archaeology. In this episode we'll be returning to Metro Center Mall. Now I had previously done a video on Metro Center Mall, but I heard from a lot of viewers that the mall was artificially busy in that video because I had filmed there right before Christmas. So now I wanted to take a look and see what the mall looks like well removed from the holiday shopping season. And in this video we'll be taking a look at the inside and outside of the mall. But before we do that, let's take a look at some footage of the mall back in 1988. Now this footage is provided by YouTube user Michael March, and I'll put a link to it down in the description below. And look at all that neon lighting. This is just absolutely amazing to see Metro Center Mall during its heyday in 1988. If you weren't aware, the mall portions of the 1989 film Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure were actually filmed at this mall, which is one of the many reasons why this mall is a Phoenix landmark. I am really grateful that somebody had the foresight to film Metro Center Mall back in 1988. This is really cool to see. And if you look at that pay less down in the lower right, I know it was a little bit blurry there, but we'll see that store actually closed in the current footage that I took. And here's the ice skating rink that used to exist at Metro Center Mall. A lot of people talk about and remember this. Now let's take a look at the outside of Metro Center Mall. And you may notice uh, something I've added to the videos now is down in the lower left hand corner, you'll see the uh, name of the song and the artist pop up that's currently playing in the video. I get a lot of questions about the music in my videos, so uh, now you can know exactly which songs are playing. This first empty anchor store that we're looking at was most recently occupied by JCPenney. And this is pretty gross over here. I found this early morning salon entrance, and I don't know if this was for JCPenney originally, or if it was from one of the other department stores this was before that. This building was at one time a Rhodes Brothers department store, and then also a Liberty House department store. And I got that information actually from a really awesome viewer named Enrique Cortez. He has a wealth of information about malls in the Phoenix area, and I had a hard time kind of putting together what some of these department stores were at different time periods, so I got a lot of that information from him, and he's just been super useful. So um, I'm going to post some links down to his Twitter and Instagram accounts, and also his YouTube channel, because he posts lots of interesting mall-related stuff and just things about the Phoenix area, so make sure you check that out. Now, off in the distance, we can see one of the main mall entrances and also the Harkins Theater, which is a newer-ish addition to this mall. I wanted to see what I could see through these windows here, and you can see they're pretty gross and dirty. But we can see a little bit inside the empty anchor building. I unfortunately wasn't able to see anything through these windows, though. But this is all pretty gross already. Even though I don't believe it's been unoccupied for that long. Another quick look at the uh, entrance here for this building. And here's the Sears, and this is actually still open. And this is a really cool old looking building. And this store is actually three stories inside. It's a really big Sears, and this was actually one of the busier parts of Metro Center Mall. And here's another 
view of another side of the Sears building, and I like that arched entryway there. This is just a really cool, old-looking building. And then we've got another main entrance to the mall here. While doing research for this video, I actually found another video on the Phoenix City Council's YouTube channel that was an interview from November with a representative from the group that owns the mall, and he talked about some of the redevelopment plans that they have for this mall. And from what they were showing in that video and the uh, map for the planned redevelopment, a lot of things about this mall are going to change, so I'm glad that I'm documenting the outside of this. Now this building I thought was really cool. This is another empty anchor building, and this was last occupied by Macy's. Before that it was actually occupied for Robinson's May, and then originally it was a Goldwater's. And again, I got that information from Enrique Cortez, so thank you very much, Enrique. But walking up to this building, you kind of get the uh, sense of how grand these pillars are. This is, these are really big, and I also found the um, tile work that's on the front of this building really interesting, too. And again, I'm glad that I was able to document this on video, because I'm sure this is another thing that's going to change drastically with the redevelopment plans. Look at that tile, that texture is just really interesting. And I was able to see in through the windows here and you can see the empty anchor. Now even this was just recently occupied by Macy's, it still looks very 90s in there. The, the fixtures and the tile and carpet and everything that you are able to see. I wish I could get in there. I, I did try the doors, but they were locked. And again, we can see just how grand this entryway is in these pillars. This is a really cool building, and I bet this was really amazing looking when Metro Center Mall first opened, and this was a Goldwater's. Now, last I wanted to show the Dillard's. Uh, Dillard's is only occupying the second story of their building, and unfortunately the sun wasn't cooperating here, but I did kind of want to show just, you know, how empty the parking lots were, and also some of the uh, interesting architectural details on this Dillard's. This is another kind of old school looking building, and I actually like it, and I like those lamp posts and everything too. Now that we're finished uh, taking a look at the outside, let's take a look at the inside of Metro Center Mall and we can start to see just how dead it is in here. I do dig this tile. I know that it's newer than the 90s, but it still looks very 90s to me. Um, but I do like the tile that we saw in the video at the beginning from the mall in 1988. That's, that was really cool looking. And here we can see where the Walmart will be coming soon. That was the old Broadway building that they tore down and are replacing with the Walmart, which is part of the drastic redevelopment plan for this mall. And as we walk around the corner here, we can see off to the left off in the distance that closed Payless shoe source. That was actually in that video from 1988. I, I pointed it out there. That's the same store. And unfortunately, it's closed now. And there it is again on the right. Now pretty much almost everything is closed down this wing, but I wanted to show how big this mall is. And I love the architectural details in the ceiling, the skylights and stuff, and the way that the balconies are kind of rounded. You can see a lot of that detail um, in the video from 1988 as well. But there's just nobody here.
There's a Wetzel's Pretzels, a mall fixture. You know, and I want to point out too that I filmed this on a Saturday afternoon between about 1 and 2.30 in the afternoon when I was at this mall filming. So this was a Saturday afternoon when a mall should be busy and this just looks dead. And if you saw my first video of Metro Center Mall, you remember there was an arcade here, but when I first got here I was like, oh wow, the arcade closed, but it didn't close, it actually just moved to a smaller uh, storefront within the mall, but it looks like they're still in the process of kind of cleaning some stuff up here. I like this gray speckled tile on whatever this store used to be. And you can see this has been here for a while because some of the grout's fallen out. And then here's the Sears. And I like this uh, Cosby sweater looking carpet they have here in the kind of courtyardish areas. It's pretty psychedelic. I wonder what this used to be in here. Can't really tell. Seems like this was a pretty big store though. See the industrial skate shop is closed now. Here's a closer look at some of that tile work. This is a pretty big storefront here, too, to the left. And here we've got this really cool uh, old school looking elevator, which we'll have a closer look at the inside of later on in the video. And it looks like this may have been like a fountain at some time, and then they've kind of changed it over to like a planter area, but it looks like there's a drain and stuff there in the middle. So many empty storefronts. And as you can see, it is much deader than it was in the video that I filmed a few months back. Well, more than a few months back during the Christmas holiday shopping season. Something else that I noticed too is they had quite a few of the escalators like permanently shut off. I don't know if they're just broken or they're trying to save power, but they've got them turned off and then they have these big boxy things over them so that you can't even use them as stairs. This was a table that I found that I really liked in uh, one of the seating areas. I like the tile mosaic. And actually right there to the left is the security desk and there is a security guard there monitoring monitors. But uh, I didn't have any problems with security filming here. It seems like Fiesta Mall is really the mall that I've had the most issues with filming. Here we can see more just mostly empty corridors, a few people lingering around, but not a lot of activity. 
really unfortunate to see it like this, because like I said, this mall was a Phoenix landmark. When this mall opened in 1973, it was one of the biggest shopping malls in the United States, and I think it may have been the biggest one in Arizona at that point. And like I mentioned earlier, it was used in a major Hollywood film, and it was just a major Phoenix landmark. To, so to see it fall to where it's at now, that, that's why I titled the video Metro Center Mall's Bogus Journey, kind of a play on that uh, Bill and Ted's theme, because it is really unfortunate to see it like this. This was something else I found interesting too. It's like a big, giant, proactive vending machine. They've automated the mall kiosk here which is kind of interesting to see. Like I mentioned, I watched a video with the um, a representative from the current company that owns this mall, and they have major plans to redevelop it, which seems to include ripping the roof off. Um, the anchor stores would obviously stay, but a lot of it would become mixed use. That's a term we hear a lot with Dead Mall revitalization, mixed use. So uh, residential, entertainment, office space, all that kind of stuff, and some retail. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out for Metro Center Mall, but it's pretty obvious that the Metro Center Mall that we know today and the one that we grew up with is, is going to vastly change very, very soon. Now, off to the left there is the downstairs entrance for the what was the Macy's and also originally the Goldwaters. And I, I like those really cool display windows there off to the side of it. It's too bad that there's nothing in them. Here's something else weird I found, a hurricane simulator. I've never seen one of these before, but as far as I can tell, it's basically a machine that you put a few dollars into and then it just gets really windy inside. It seems kind of silly to me. I wonder if they put these in malls in like Florida. Now, I'm not sure what was going on with this store. This appears like it may have been some sort of furniture store, but it seemed kind of like a huge mess when I looked in here through the, uh, through the chain link fence here. A lot of furniture and boxes, but it doesn't seem like a lot of order to it. Not, I'm not sure if this place is like closed permanently or what the deal is. see another closed off escalator here. All right, let's take a trip up one of the elevators. Things don't look much better for them all up here. Here 
I really like the uh, shape of the skylights and the geometric shapes in the ceiling. That is really cool, so it does make me really sad that one of the planned things to do is rip the roof off this place. See, I just, I really like those concentric circles all the way up to the skylight. It, like I said, really sad that the roof's going to disappear. I'll put a link down to the video that I'm talking about down in the description. I urge you to watch it. It's a little bit dry because it's, like I said, a Phoenix City Council YouTube channel's video, but it does have a representative from the company that owns this mall, and he does show kind of a detailed map of what some of the plans are for this place. So definitely go check it out, if not just to see the map part of it. Now this area looks fairly busy because right down that hallway there is the food court. And of course the food court is always the busiest part of the mall, even in dead malls. And here's a closer look at the food court itself. Uh, not a lot of people sitting down and eating, but most of the uh, restaurant spaces do still appear to be occupied. And again, just a massive skylight in the middle, which is really cool. But you can see there is actually some foot traffic over here. Now we'll take a look at the uh, corridor leading back out of the food court. And you can see most of the spaces down this little corridor are actually occupied as well because, again, the food court is the busiest part of the mall still. Something else I kind of wanted to bring up was music. Everybody seems to like the vaporwave music in these dead malls, and I like it too, and I like some of the jazzy stuff as well, but I would like to start kind of using more uh, chip tunes from video games, because to me, a big part of going to the mall in the 80s and 90s was to buy video games, and I, I like chip tunes, so let me know down in the comments below what you think about, um, you know, maybe me adding some other things besides the vaporwave and jazz and bebop stuff to these videos, and including some chip tunes in the videos. upstairs part of the Walmart that's planned there. And again, a few empty stores here, and in front of us is the upstairs entrance for that empty uh, Macy's Anchor building. I like these uh, tile mosaic planter things too, they are pretty cool, even though the fake plants inside are kind of sad looking. Like I mentioned earlier, this was filmed in the middle of the afternoon on a Saturday, and this is just not enough shopping traffic to sustain a mall this big. I'm sure like many of you, I have memories of going to the mall on a Saturday afternoon and it just being 
absolutely packed. Especially in Arizona in the summer, it is really hot. I think it was like 105 on the day that I filmed this. So I remember as a kid, we would go to the mall for the free air conditioning, you know, to get out of the heat when we were kids and there's just nobody here. It's a shame that this mall hasn't been able to shake the kind of negative stigma that it has as far as being a high crime rate area with a lot of car thefts in the parking lot and a lot of robberies and stuff because this mall did face those problems in the 90s and that did hurt it quite a bit but from what I've been reading and research I've been doing they got that all under control here. They've got a lot of high tech security, a lot of high tech cameras, a lot of security presence and from one news report that I was watching from a few years ago, this was one of the safest malls in the Phoenix area now, so it's a shame that it just can't shake that stigma that turns out it's not even true anymore. Here's the uh, temporary hiring offices for the Walmart. And then off over here is the All for Anime store, which apparently has been here for a very long time. And viewers on my older video are always surprised that it's still there. And it's, it's one of the few things that are still open all the way on this end of the mall. Now this empty storefront here with the black and white marble tile is another one that caught my eye. I would love to know what this was originally because this tile just kind of has that late 80s, early 90s aesthetic to it. And I had to take a peek behind the curtain and see what it looked like on the inside. And if you can see there, that tile continues all the way on the floor 
and there's mirrored pillars and then kind of a pathway in the ceiling that matches that tile floor. I, I would love to know what this is because this just looks really old school. This is another one that was interesting too, this one with the, the pictures of the kids on the top. I'm sure this was some sort of a, of a children's clothing place or something. wind down and get to the end of our video tour of Metro Center Mall here so I just want to thank everyone again for watching and um, also wanted to mention that I do have some travel planned in the future so I should be filming some things out of state fairly soon which makes you pretty excited I do plan on doing at least one but two videos a week when I can so if you're not subscribed to the channel make sure that you do that so you can keep up with all the new videos that come out each week and also make sure to hit that bell notification icon next to the subscribe button because I often do uh, live streams from the places that I'm filming at so if you want to get the notifications for those make sure you hit that little bell icon and also lastly make sure to follow us at the social media links down below uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon that's the best way to keep up with what's uh, going on with the channel Hey, thanks for checking out my video tour of Metro Center Mall in Phoenix. If you like what you saw and you've got a few more minutes, I've got some other videos you can check out here. And also, don't forget to follow us at the uh, social media links there. And as always, thanks for watching.